In today's video, we are going to be talking about homeschooling through hardships. Hey guys, it's Vani from Mrs. Mom's Homeschool and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I post videos on homeschool curriculums, homeschooling tips and answers, homeschooling day in the lives, and everything to help you on your homeschooling journey. So if you are a new homeschooler or an older homeschooler, there's something here for everybody. So please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you are notified every time I post a new video. Today's video is in collaboration with a bunch of other very wonderful homeschooling mothers who are going to be posting a series on homeschooling challenges. And the topic I chose was homeschooling through hardships. So make sure you check out that playlist in the description below. You're going to get a different video based on all types of different homeschooling challenges that you will face in your homeschooling journey. So in order to give you guys tips, you first have to know my story. I've shared little bits and pieces of it on here, but as time has gone and it's been a little bit easier to talk about it so i want to share with you guys and open up to you guys and let you get to know me a little bit better and share with you guys um why i'm speaking about homeschooling through hardships so after living with lupus for many many years my mother was diagnosed in about 2013 around that time with end-stage renal failure so i started homeschooling about about 2012 so the time frames are a little mixed up of like when she got diagnosed and stuff but in 2016 she was told that she had a mass on her kidney and she already had renal failure but she had a mass on the kidney they couldn't test it for um to see if it was malignant because of where it was located and the damage she already had to her kidney so they suggested that she had it removed so she decided to let them remove it and when they did it was malignant and it immediately spread throughout her whole body at that time they came to my husband and i and told us that she had stage four cancer and had six months to live at this time my kids were about one six and ten we immediately made the decision to move her into our home and that i would take care of her so we switched all of our kids rooms around and moved two of them in together and gave my mom her own room so at this time i was still full-time homeschooling and taking care of a toddler and full-time taking care of my mother trying to do all these natural remedies and juicing and everything like i went on the website cancertutor.com i tried every protocol um, trying to find ways to heal her even heal her even though they said that there was nothing that could be done chemo wouldn't even help her for the type of she had a rare cancer and it was a very fast growing cancer um, it was a renal sarcomatoid so um, this cancer was it was like the the rate of the percentage of her being cured through chemotherapy was only like 15 percent chance which she felt wasn't worth the risk of all the suffering she was going to have to do um, for a 15 percent chance you know so she wanted to kind of just enjoy the rest of the life that she had and not do the chemotherapy but um i won't get into details as far as all the things i had to do for her to care for her because then it gets too emotional and i try not to relive the past because your brain doesn't know if you're re-experiencing it or if you're experiencing it for the first time and for me to put myself through all that trauma for nothing is is really not worth it and that is indeed a big tip right there is not to continue to relive your trauma or your hardship or whatever pain you're going through because your brain doesn't know that it's not happening again and you're continuously traumatizing yourself it's going to be very hard to homeschool or do anything in life if you're constantly depressed and down so we'll get into the tips in a minute i just want to finish sharing my story so like the doctor said within six months she passed away long story short um and at that time my husband had the only income that we had was my husband's business and him being away a lot to help me with the kids and we didn't have any help so it was just him and i he was helping me with the kids and he was helping me with my mom taking her to appointments watching the kids so i can take her to appointments just speaking to doctors like all the different things that we had to do our business suffered greatly and so here i am I have three kids still trying to homeschool we took some time off but I um, didn't want them to fall behind all the anxiety and all the emotion and all the pain and everything all at once. Another very traumatic event happened to me um, and to my husband that I'm not ready to talk about 
uh, anytime soon, probably never on camera. But it was something also very traumatic that happened the kids never knew about. Uh, we did our best on top of everything we were suffering through to uh, keep them in the dark about everything. Continue with a happy spirit, a happy heart, do play games with them. Like, I don't even know how we did it. Honestly, I don't know how I did it. Um, but I did my very best to just give them like a normal life. Four months after that, after leaving my New Year's Eve party, my father had an accident and he passed away. I was just a wreck. I felt like it wasn't me anymore. I felt like it was just a person going through the motions of life and those were some hard times and this all happened it's only been about a year and a half since everything has happened so i'm still in the middle of of healing and i think i'll be there for a while so anyway i want to give you guys my top 10 tips there goes some more alliteration for you guys my top 10 tips for dealing with hardships while you are a homeschooling mother because you don't have the option to have eight hours free of your kids and when you're feeling stressed and depressed and sad and anxious for whatever reason that you're going through you still have to provide some sort of positive atmosphere for your children so that they are not traumatized through this event and remember it forever and that they can continue to live a normal childhood and be happy like they're supposed to and also you're in charge of their education on top of that so you don't really have the option to just quit school and just stop for a whole year or two years until you feel better so um i'm going to give you some tips on what i do and what i've done that has helped me homeschool through my hard times so the first tip is, yes, you can take some time off and you should. If you're going through some sort of traumatic thing, you should take off some time. You can take off a month and your kids will still be okay. You can just make up that time in the summer. Um, just take some time to, you know, not like a whole year. I wouldn't recommend taking off too much time because you do want to keep a normal life for your kids, like I said. Um, but you you do need some time. You need some time to cope. You need some time to heal. You need some time to deal with your situation or to take care of a situation. Or if you're ill, you need a little bit of time to figure out how to get better. So there's so many different types of hardships that could come. You could, that could be an illness, a death. Um, it could be um, this COVID-19 junk that keeps happening. It could be a loss of a job, a uh, divorce. There's just uh, there's a million different things that could be happening to you. And you may need that time to take off to get some things in order in order for you to be able to continue to homeschool your children. Some people even put their kids in school for a year while they're getting their stuff situated and then they bring them back when they're ready. Or if, they, if it works out for them, they decide to just keep them in school. But if that option is not appealing to you, it's not an option for you, then my tip number two is to keep going. Keep homeschooling. If you really need to keep yourself busy like I did, Continue to homeschool, but don't stress yourself out about it. Just focus on the basics, reading, writing, and math. And that alone will get them through. They won't fall behind. Sciences and histories can always be caught up later. They do the same things over and over throughout their whole life anyway. Just focus on those basic things. It'll keep them entertained, keep their minds busy, keep you busy for a portion of the day, but not too much of the day. And that is your second option. Tip number three, focus on unit studies or an unschooling method of learning where your kids can learn in a more unstructured way that would be less stressful for you, less preparation for you, and less time for you. Okay, so now that I've given you the first three tips on what to do as far as your kids' education, whether it's taking a break, putting them in school, doing unit studies or unschooling or just teaching them the basics now it's time to focus on yourself you got to focus on you and you have to get yourself ready so that you can continue your life and continue your your journey with your children so i suggest finding something that you really enjoy a hobby a vitamin a specialty something to help you cope each and every day a morning jog an evening bike ride time with your friends every week time with your husband every night Find something that makes you feel good or feel happy and do that almost every day or at least weekly. Next tip is to take some time in the morning before the kids wake up 
for yourself to get your mind right. So if you're a Christian, make sure you spend time with God, praying, reading the Bible, meditating on his word. And if you're not a religious person or a Christian, you can still meditate. You can still take time to go out into nature and just take some deep breaths and just sit there and not think about anything negative and just look at all the beautiful things that there are in the world and just relax your mind and relax yourself and get yourself ready for the day. I would always go out there and I would say my I made a list of positive affirmations and so that's something that you should be doing is you have to retrain your negative thinking into making uh, getting positive thoughts for yourself because what happens is when you're going through hardships trauma or anything like that you're wiring your your you are rewiring your brain to think a certain negative way and that's why you're feeling anxious and depressed and stressed out you can't eat or you're eating too much so it's very important to get control and a handle on your mind and on your thoughts and if you're a Christian the Bible talks a lot about your thoughts and how to control your thoughts and how the power of your thoughts are how so important it is you hear it all over you hear about the secret you hear motivational speakers tell you telling you about uh, positive thinking and it's all so true you have to control your self-talk and stop any negative self-talk and turn it into something positive so the way to retrain your mind is by saying positive affirmations if you're a christian you can do um you can base it on bible verses um and if you're not you can just say some positive affirmations in the form of i am if you look those up on youtube you'll find out how to do that easily and i'm going to link below some bible verses that can help you guys to see how important it is to retrain your mind and to think on things that are good and lovely and beautiful if you're finding it hard to get out of bed like i do still sometimes i just get my airpods pop them in my ear and i listen to my morning morning meditation a morning preaching i do something to get me to get me out of whatever mind so sometimes i'll wake up and i have like nightmares and stuff so what i'll do is i'll and then you know when you have a nightmare like your emotions are all in it like it just happened to you and your body's all like confused and like traumatized so i normally would just lay in bed and i would just listen to my things that help me to feel better before i even get out of bed then i get out of bed and i start my day you want to try to get yourself together you don't want your kids seeing you crying all the time or making them feel sad for you it's okay sometimes for them to see you cry because it's important for them to learn empathy that way they see that mommy's a human being and mommy gets sad too but to have to be crying around them or upset around them or mad or moody all the time is really not good for their development so it's really important that you take care of yourself first before you take care of your precious babies tip number six find a hobby that you really enjoy doing YouTube has saved me like I love Love making these videos especially when I was when I make my day in the life videos I love editing those videos and creating something beautiful beautiful memory that sometimes I'll just go back and I'll look at my old videos and I watch how little my kids were or how much fun we had homeschooling and it's it's just such a creative thing for me to do and it was it was a big part of my therapy was was and is making these youtube videos for you guys so find something that you guys really enjoy some sort of hobby some sort of um something that you can do to keep your mind busy that you can do every single day like i for me i have to be busy all the time so with you know preparing these videos for you guys and taking care of my kids and cleaning the house and making meals it leaves me very little time to think about things that i should be thinking about Tip number seven is to get yourself out of the house sometimes. You're with your little angels all day long and that can be very stressful and very emotionally draining, especially when you're adding hardships into the mix. Kids are hard, period. Homeschooling is tough as is. And when you throw hardships into it, you need to get out of the house sometimes before you lose your cool like get out with your girlfriends once a week go out for a walk go out for a jog go to the beach go to go out with your husband on a date night uh, go out by yourself and just go for a drive or a bike ride or do something every day or every week whatever it is that helps you that really helps you um to feel like uh, like relief and that when you come back you're like excited to see your kids and your family again maybe even taking a little weekend trip or getaway i am truly truly grateful for my best friend and my cousin who have been my light in these times and have taken me out of my normal area and i lots of times will go out once a week and i'll go walking with my best friend and or we'll just like any just time with her with them just helps me to feel so much better and it recharges me to be able to come home and face everything that I'm dealing with. So thank you to my bestie, you know who you are. For tip number eight, I've 
talked about it a little bit on like what to do so my tip number eight is if you're suffering from depression anxiety and you're doing all these other things do these other tips that i've given you but also it's totally okay to take a supplement a vitamin a special tea something to help you feel normal or even to just to feel a little bit okay like a normal human being um while you're coping through the situation i have a supplement that i use and i'm going to link it here um that you can check out if you want but you just if you need something temporarily to help you through this time um, as long as it's it's good for you go ahead and do it do what you need to do if you're prescribed depressants antidepressants or anti-anxiety don't feel bad for taking it just be careful with them because they become addictive i'd rather go the natural route but it's okay to be able to 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 look for outside help while you're doing all these other things and getting yourself together just be careful not to become dependent on these things uh, but just use them as a tool to help you move forward to help you heal until you don't need them anymore Tip number nine is play with your kids. Your kids will make you feel happy when you're playing with them. Get on the floor and play with them. Play with toys, play board games, card games, video games. Hang out with them. Go for a bike ride, go for a walk. I do that a lot. I go for bike rides a lot. It helps me out a lot. Get that time with them. Their giggles, their laughs, their silliness. If you have kids that are funny, my kids are my therapy. Um, when I need just that, they, they give me the love and the hugs and the kisses and the laughter. It's a big therapy for me and maybe that'll help you too. And then tip number 10 is to subscribe to my channel. <laughs> no, seriously though, like if you get, if you keep your mind busy, um, that is very important. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, I have so many videos here that will keep you busy, keep you entertained. And if you're homeschooling, it'll help you to focus on creating um, different things in your homeschooling journey. That could be something you could really get into and I'm here to help you do that. So um, yes, yeah, so hardships are no joke. It's really hard work to, to be a normal human being and homeschool and be a mom and a teacher and a wife and all this stuff when you're going through stuff, but you can do it. Just follow my tips. Uh, hopefully they'll help you. Um, leave a comment below if you need prayer. I'm going to leave some links in the description below and some links and cards up here. And um, make sure you check out that playlist, guys, because there's a whole bunch of other types of hardships that people go through that are more detailed that you that might help you even more than this one. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching and for listening to my story. And um, you guys are always so supportive. And I love the comments. Keep on leaving me those comments. They really help me when you guys comment um, and I know that I'm not making videos for nothing it actually really helps me too to want to keep producing content for you especially when I get in my down days so I really appreciate that you guys so thank you so much for all you guys who are there to support me and I hope that I'm here to help you and that's it so I will see you guys in the next video